friends, it's Mr Max Bliss on the 25th of January 2016 and um, here we have in the southwest of France the sky is being obliterated, the uh, skies are whiting out and we can see lots and lots of uh, contrails and uh, haze building up to block out the sky, to trap in heat. I've been looking at books from the 1960s and 70s about weather and climate modification and it's quite clear that contrails were understood uh, to warm the climate by a surface temperature of 1.6 degrees centigrade. Now I think that's very very significant although in the writing itself they said it was insignificant. But when we consider the hoo-ha that the climate scientists are now making, saying that climate engineering is necessary because of the supposed global warming due to CO2. Now global warming, it's, it's minimal. Since the end of the Little Ice Age, and the Little Ice Age is also known as pre-industrial times, the global warming since the end of the Little Ice Age, or pre-industrial times, is only 0.08 of 1 degree centigrade, or 0.8 centigrade. So it's minimal. And they're saying, uh, oh, we've got to make sure we keep it well below two degrees a rise since pre-industrial times. And yet there are writings in the 60s saying that contrails, look at that filthy one up there. Look at the frequency waves in the sky. And interestingly, look at the plane there with a short dissipating trail flying next to persistent contrail left by this plane there. It was Manabee's calculations that suggested that only 400 planes flying four times a day would leave enough water vapour in the upper atmosphere to cause a surface warming of 1.6 degrees centigrade. Now I would say on occasions sometimes the temperatures may be warmer than uh, is the so-called average. I think there's a great deal of variance. But we never see, we all, well, with the climate scientists linked to the IPCC, many have pulled away. You've got to look into the fact that IPCC scientists in the past pull away from the IPCC. And many of them are not happy, you know. A filthy, persistent contrail is different to this one there. Yes, yeah, scientists pull away from the IPCC because they're, they're not happy with it. Because it's a political organisation. Hey, it's just disgusting. Well, I tell you what, I'm reading about the global uh, requirement for alumin alumina fuel additives. This is in reference to nanoparticles, alumina oxide, aluminium oxide. Simply because it's already in biodiesel. And it's already been trialled in bio-aviation fuels. So we know they have the capability of putting in fuels. And there's all this hoo-ha about contrail chemtrail. Are the chemtrails being artificially, are the contrails being artificially nucleated? Well, if they can certainly put in aluminium or alumina fuel additives into biofuels, they can surely put it into these types of normal jet fuels. Persistent and non-persistent contrails. Yeah, something very different there. And basically, we know they can put alumina fuel additives into biofuel 
So I think it's logical that a deceitful, lying, military industrial complex could certainly add it into jet fuel. There are other ways that contrails can be formed. And the thing is, what we've got to understand is our planet has become increasingly cloudy. This traps in heat. This alters the climate. And if you read the history, this has been the long-term goal, to alter the weather and climate. It's not imaginary. It's not a conspiracy theory. And much of the climate scientist science today is based on data. This data can be homogenized. It can be altered. We had the climate gate scandals, for example. So what there appears to be is a, is a time where we're going through um, global climate changes, which include natural vari variation, that include large-scale weather and climate modification, which is not really taken into account. The models don't account for over 50 years plus of constant weather modification. There are 52 nations now with full-time weather modification programs. That's huge. There have been all kinds of geoengineering experiments, some even involving nuclear detonations in our atmosphere. Operation Star Trek and Operation Argos. Persistent and dissipating. Our scientists have done incredibly horrific things to our planet. They, they, pesticides are now in all the foods. And the changes in agriculture, and often uh, not necessarily because it's for eating, there's lots of other uses, these have tremendous effects on the climate. And this is known. It was known that deforestation would have a serious impact on climate. And what do we see? We see huge programs of deforestation just for profit not really for necessity. I would say this is part of the military industrial complex to create a type of climate change that they can then use with their puppeteer governments to create a one world government. That might sound frightening to people, but you know what, if you look at the legislation, it begins, you can see the picture, you can see it. You can see it forming. The legislation is coming into view. I think it's up to everybody to really, really begin to realise our governments are working against the, the welfare of their people. And the only way we're going to get this changed is by people finding whatever it takes within them to be able to overcome all the programming we've all been subjected to, all the conditioning we've been subjected to, and includes the climate scientists, that whole lot. Do we really want to live with a one world government, with a homogenized culture, with everybody with um, nanotechnology as part of their bodies? You know, this horrendous development of science changing the face of our planet so that the oligarchy, this obscenely rich, tiny, tiny percentage at the top of the food chain, so that they can have total control. Do we really want these people to have total control? These are the people that bought us the nuclear bombs, bought us war. It's them that make the war, not us, we the people. People never want war. Who brings it to us? oligarchy who control governments so I think we have to find a way to overcome all our differences we have all those different isms that are impregnated in our minds through years and generations of conditioning and we need to overcome that so that we can begin to unite and there's so many different methods used to stop us uniting it's incredible 
somehow we've got to overcome this and we need to make inroads confronting and exposing the corruption of the establishment because at some point we need to change the system. The systems have changed many times before and it needs to change again and we need to make a new system where there will be a, an element of transparency, an element of um, um, interaction with the public and the system of governance. It should be an element of self-governance. This it should be perhaps direct democracy, some form where we all get a say, where we can, where there can be referendums for all major decisions. There needs to be massive changes, and of course, one of the most major and important changes will have to be changing the money system. These bankers can no longer have control. We uh, nations need to um, regain their sovereignty. Move away from centralised one world government systems, move away from central banks, have national banks issue their own money. We need to break away from usury. We need to disband, uh, dismantle the corporate banking systems. The corporations and the bankers, they got far too powerful. And this is bad for the people because they're, they're in it for profit and control. It's time for change and the only way this change is going to happen is, is if everybody comes to the conclusion that they have to do something, that they have to be, be the change they want to see. This is the reality of it. They rely on us being apathetic and um, left in a, with a feeling of being powerless. But that of course is part of conditioning and it's perception. And that's what the government are very, very good at, any government, is perception management, is controlling us. Well, we need to break out of that paradigm, and I believe we can. And it's a question of um, your, 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 your position. You see yourself in the world. You've got the right to ask questions. You've got the right to challenge the establishment if they're lying, if, if they are deceiving us. You have to find your voice. Everyone does. Everyone needs to be their own leader. We don't need leaders. More poison. Why do I say poison? Because aluminium oxide is poisonous. Aluminium oxide in nanoparticle form can enter the body. It can get to places in the body where your body would normally be able to deal with it, where it can't deal with it. It will get into your brain. It will get into different organs. This has been understood by research done by Wrights Patterson Air Force Research Laboratory. They know. And it's all very well for those who are fortunate enough to be able to get designer protein drugs, modern new drugs that can uh, combat the ill effects of, this, uh, of these nanoparticles. That's why I call it poison, because it's dangerous. The sky's changing, the sun looks silvery white now. The skies are often white. This is natural. Anyway, I want to share this little space where I come to think it's a beautiful place. And I'm sharing my thoughts. It's time to wake up, my friends. Take care. Bye for now.